the Brofist to you all and a happy, happy Thursday. It is Thursday, I know. We usually have it on a Friday, but we are doing Lords of the Fallen tomorrow. It is a sponsored stream, but as always, we do games that we want to play. Lords of Fallen has been something I'm looking forward to, a little bit of a Souls-like, uh, and we'll be doing that tomorrow afternoon, which means drama time is on a thursday today we did put out a notification over on twitter i refuse to call it the other thing uh but if you haven't got twitter i understand it and i'm really sorry if you missed the live show i know many of you will probably miss it who usually tune in on a friday but it is on a thursday today but what a week it has been it's not over yet but what a week it has been i have been since last i updated you we were like so chilling in terraria we were like blasting dude like fight it was six days ago. Six days ago, we were blasting. We'd gotten strong. We'd gotten powerful. We were taking on bosses left and right. We were knuckle sandwiching them all. And since then, I, I, at that point, I think we'd racked up like 100, kill, 100 deaths in our Terraria learning experience. As of right now, we're definitely approaching 300 because... <laughs> I'm not spoiling it for anybody who's catching up on the VODs or following us over on uh, the Daily Preach YouTube channel. Uh, I should point out if that channel is changing name to the Daily Preach and we'll have uh, regular daily videos that I'm producing up over on there as our main channel is going to be focused on legacy style videos. Uh, so I'm spreading that message as much as possible, but you will get like highlight, uh, not highlights, not like stream clips and actual videos uh, going up on there. I've, uh, I've sent Bex like six so she's working on them uh, and she's getting them out. But since then, yeah, things have gotten hard. Really hard. But I'm happy to say that as of today, we have started to overcome some obstacles. That's all I'm going to say. As of today, we've started to overcome some obstacles. I'm really pleased. The day started miserable with frustration. I nearly broke my desk. But as of right now, though, I'm pretty happy. And tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be the best day of all time. Because tomorrow... The cleansing will begin. The cleansing will begin. We shall cleanse. It's going to be so good. We are going to be cleansing and purifying and bringing sanity back to a world that is ravaged with death and disease and misery and poverty because every idea I had about solving the issue did not work. But now we think we have a working solution. And that will be the dream. But that's not why you're here right now. Audio listeners and uh, everyone else who's with us, including our wonderful live audience who's joining us here. Uh, it is drama time. We're going to have some fun to finish off the day. Uh, Bex has provided a sort of selection of stories from you guys. And of course, this show cannot happen without you. Everybody, every single person listening to this or watching this right now has a story to tell of something that happened to them online involving other people. And it really doesn't matter what game. Uh, it's any Obviously, when you're multiplaying... It doesn't really matter. I don't want to hear that you're uh, some guy on COD called your mum a whore or something. Uh, that's not what we're interested in, but everybody's got a story to tell. Everybody's got a tale that happened to them and would love to share it with us. So send them into drama at preachgaming.com uh, and we will uh, share them with the world. Not only as a means of entertainment, but also as a warning for a new and aspiring internet people. Every single day, more and more join us in this multiplayer online world and they don't know the things we know after our years and years of experience. So it's well worth sharing. So I've got into Bex. Every story is pretty good. So let me have a look at some tales. Um, oh, I have to go with this because it always makes me laugh. <laughs> it always makes... It, these stories always make me laugh. Every single fucking time because... It should be so, so easy, shouldn't it, friends? It should be so, so easy. But as we know from the old t Daily Preach, <clears throat> ah, I don't like that title. Let's go with a quick... Get rid of the ah. It's a quick... Plus two. <laughs> it's a quick plus two. Barely more difficult than Mythic Zero. Barely more difficult than the introductory tutorial style of playing. Uh, no names for this one, so I'll, need, I'll leave my glorious title in there. Ten minutes max. Is there any... I don't know what's about to happen, obviously. I go into these stories as blind as I do some of our video games. But... There's really no logical reason at any point that you should fail a plus two. <laughs> like, there's really no logical reason. Unless literally everybody's like a bot or 
is AFK and hoping somebody will carry that there'll be some powerful person in there and they're like alt tabbed and they're looking at something else. There's really no justifiable reason for failing a plus two. It's literally just welcome to slightly more HP on the mobs. Like the mechanics don't really kill you unless you like intentionally do it, you know, stand in fire or whatever. Ah, here we go. Let's have some fun. Dearest, dearest preacher. And the most benevolent jury of the chat. Today I come to you with a tale of which I already know condemns me as guilty. Oh, are you the cause? Oh, what did you do? Our author has already admitted his guilt, my friends. He has admitted his guilt in the opening sentence of the story. He has admitted his guilt. But I come to you today as a confessional of sorts. I wish to share with you my tale. To begin, I must declare that I am in no way, shape, or form a good World of Warcraft player. I started playing in Mists of Pandaria when a friend invited me to play this amazing, cool multiplayer game that he just recently got into. My god, these youngsters. These youngsters. It looked awesome, and I was so excited. I downloaded the game over the course of a week on my Australian- oh no. What year was Mr. Pandaria and it took you a week to download the game? What year was Mr. Pandaria? 2015? Something like that? 2012? Shouldn't take you a week to download the game in 2012. <laughs> it, should, it really shouldn't be taking you a week to download the game in 2012. But to be fair... I'm not going to reveal the name, but there's somebody in our top tier supporters, uh, top tier website supporters, who was using internet with a mobile phone that was sellotaped to a pole above their house in Australia, as it was the only place they could get signal from the neighboring town, I believe, uh, which was about 30 miles away or something. <laughs> That's how they were using it. It worked fine, though. We were talking on voice comms and stuff. Like, it worked. <laughs> It's all, hey, she nailed it. She got it all figured out. It's like, that's the way. It wasn't lying. No, it was, uh, I'm not going to say the name. Uh, but she nailed it. It was good. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I excited. I downloaded the game over the course of a week on my fucking poor Aussie internet. Made myself a Blelf rogue uh, and went adventuring with my friend, performing small genocides of the weak and powerless creatures of the Eversong Woods. Unfortunately... I was a broke-ass, poor 13-year-old Blelf Rogue. Makes a lot of sense. 13-year-old uh, and had no means of paying the subscription. So my epic WoW Mr. Pandaria journey ended abruptly at level 20 when the free trial ceased. Have you tried Final Fantasy XIV? It allows you to go a lot further than level 20. Not, not that I'm saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying that one offers significantly more for free uh, if you uh, if you choose to go down that road. <laughs> if you're just saying, you can try that out. Um, either that or it was after the trial period. Honestly, I was 13 and I don't remember the details, but I know I couldn't play anymore. My life remained World of Warcraftless until Legion. 16 years old. I've got grass on the pitch and I'm ready to go. Another different friend was telling me about how awesome World of Warcraft was now. Apparently they had been through what he described as the worst expansion of all time. Ha <laughs> ha! You thought WAD was the worst. Oh, good times, man. Do you remember back in the day when WAD was the worst expansion? Sick. <laughs> innocence. Sweet, blessed innocence. Ah. <sighs> oh. Kick it back. <laughs> Kick it back. What is top three? <laughs> I don't think one's top three, but uh, I remember back then. Uh, new expansion at BlizzCon, though. I'm excited. <clears throat> and that he was starting to get really awesome loot in a raid called the Nighthold. The fond memories of dancing around, slaughtering hundreds of mana worms came rushing back to me. Like roses blooming to tint my recollection. I was so hooked. I installed the game again. A large portion of my savings was spent, and my excitement practically blasting through the roof. 
I was ready to stand side by side with my friends, slaying demons like a badass. This time I was playing Alliance, as my friend made himself a human warrior. Every time I see someone playing a human warrior, I just know they only have sex in the missionary position. Like, guaranteed. It's so guaranteed. It's unbelievable. Like, you okay? You okay? You want me to slow down? You want me to slow down? I can go slow. You want it tender? <laughs> Fucking loser. Fucking. <sighs> so I had to create a new awesome character to cleave demons in twain. Now... I remind you all, I was an edgy 16-year-old. Can you guess what I made? Alliance edgy 16-year-old. I'm thinking female human warlock. You're not going to go Draenei at 16 because they look a bit silly. Uh, unless it's a female Draenei. Uh, you're not going gnome because you haven't found the joy and pleasure yet that is the happy... I mean, the, 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 the glory that is gnomes. Night Elf Hunter? Not really at 16. What, human Death Knight? Mm, Wolf Boy DK? Oh, Wargan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wargan, probably. Um, I scrolled through the list and saw something that I hadn't seen the last time I played. I made myself a Wargan Death Knight. Round of applause to the live audience. <laughs> Round of applause. Oh! Now, Preacher, I know what you're thinking, but I promise to you and your audience that I am not a furry. <laughs> I I don't think anybody who plays an animal character is a furry, unless it's in certain games. <laughs> to be fair, when Wargan came out, furry meme culture hadn't ex wasn't in existence yet. Everyone thought Wargans were cool. When the Volpira rolled around, though, times had changed. Times had really moved on by the time the Volpira moved around. Like Wargan was seen as really cool when they came into the game. Then Volpira, though. Yeah, I mean, I like Vulpira. I'd play a Vulpira, but everyone calls me names. I just honestly thought that Wargan Death Knights looked so fucking cool. And I'll tell you all right now, and suck my balls, they still do. That run animation's questionable. I, I can feel the guilty emotes in chat, but I urge you to save them because it gets way worse than me making a Wargan DK. Okay. <laughs> now... I genuinely enjoyed my time in Legion, but I never got into group content like my friend did. I was very introverted, and I found it difficult to socialize and develop relationships with total strangers and guilds that I applied to and joined, so doing shit with guildies is something that I regrettably never got to experience. There is also the unfortunate fact that I am completely, admittedly, fucking dog shit at this game. Death Knight is not an easy start, man. Even today, when it's been made into a fucking scroll wheel, mouse, mouse pad type character, it's still not the easiest thing to get into. And so I never made it past Trial Raider in the seven guilds I tried in. Oof. <laughs> seven guilds? Forever Trial. Oh, oh, that's really bad, dude. That's so sad. <laughs> that's so sad. Seven different guilds tr filed, trial failed. I'm sorry if my words are a bit fucked up. I'm at like four hours sleep. Ben's not well. But I did not let it get me down, audience. And I don't didn't need teammates to kill mana worms anyway. Thus, I became the legend solo Wargan DK. And I went on a vast legendary solo career. However, truth be told... There wasn't a whole lot to do <laughs> in solo PvE content after you clear all your world quests, which I did every single day for approximately seven months. <sighs> that hurts. That really, really hurts. That that's that that hurts. That, that that hurts. That burns. That burns inside. I set myself mini goals like getting all the bonus treasure reward mounts. <sighs> <laughs> LFR wasn't an option either as I was emotionally scarred for getting kicked from the LFR even when I was trying my hardest
You know, I did, I made a video in Mists of Pandaria that proved that that's really hard to have happen to you. That's really, really You should check it out. <laughs> you should check it out. It's about the LFR, actually. It was when I was kind of on the LFR hate train. But uh, yeah, it's really hard to get kicked out of the LFR if you're actually playing. I can explain what happened, though. Uh, you know, this isn't the first time I've... Can anybody guess this? This is something that we have heard a couple of times in Drama Time of people doing who are noobs. And it's really sad. What can you... I, I, I can give you context. It was during Argus. So LFR Argus is when he got kicked. What... do? You, can you guess what he was doing and why... I don't think you will. We, we have had this happen in drama before. This is actually something people do before they realize what they're doing. He thinks taunt is a DPS ability because... And he thinks it's the hardest hitting ability he has because the boss looks at him when he does it. <laughs> it's so sad. I wish it was the first... I wish I was even in shock and I'm not. I'm not in shock. It's not the first time we've had people think that. And use that. <clears throat> and just keep taunt as part of their rotation. <sighs> Looking back on it, I now am aware that I kept turning the boss around, causing the raid to be wiped by the cone of death. And so my humble Wargan DK sat there, flying around, completing world quests. I would sit at my PC and wait for the clock to tick for when more world quests would appear. Oh, bro, you're killing me. You're fucking... Have you heard of Terraria? Or literally, like, any other game? <laughs> like, literally anything. There's so much more stuff to do. You know what's really sad, though? I totally did this. I uh, And I know uh, Shade, uh, our tank at the time, used to sit on the Dartmoor Fair carousel until the exact second the quest would f refresh to get his stuff. So we got our legendaries, man. Like, we did it. We needed that rep. But inside me, there was still a yearning. Deep in my heart for the mythological, the revered, the sweet, sweet taste of epic loot. And so, there I landed upon the one option left to me in my noble quest for glorious gear. The now fabled lands of Mythic Plus. You got kicked from LFR for using Taunt as a cooldown and you're going to go into LFR. You're going to go into Mythic Plus. This is, this is horrible. <laughs> this story is horrible. <laughs> but my dear preacher, you must remember that I did not have the convenience of friendly guildies to help me run through a few keys and my friend's guild didn't want to carry some noob shit stain when they didn't even know me. My reputation had begun to spread. Thus, there was one way that I could enter into the world of Mythic Plus without people knowing who I was. I could just pug it instead. That's a better solution. It's a way better solution. It's a way better solution. <laughs> Problem solved. At no point throughout this did you like... Google Death Knight Guide. And guess who would have popped up? Guide you. To help you. You could have just Googled Death Knight Guide. And I would have appeared. I would have appeared right in front of you. I would have been the literally top thing you would have found. Would have been like three or four of my videos explaining shit to you. <sighs> Fat boss never did class guides. At least I don't think they ever did. Throughout Legion of Battle for Azeroth, the pug was my main source of gathering loot. However, if you might remember, I am extraordinarily awful at this game. So with my low item level and garbage raider.io score, <clears throat> the only pugs that I was accepted into was in the 2-7 to seven rage, also known as the Mariana Trench. Ah... Uh... 7 to 14 is worse, in my experience. I've done a lot of Mythic Plus. 7 to 14 is way, way worse. And 12 to 14, at least during Legion, is hell on earth. Absolute hell on earth. Like, that 12 to 14 rage is turbo cancer. It's everybody who can't get their key to 15. And there's a reason. 
there's a fucking reason. Like that that is that is the bad place. Two to seven was the home of the most foul and despicable specimens that the group finder has to offer. And I perfectly belonged in that group. I could see that. Two to seven is probably full of terrible players. Like just just making a lot of newbie errors, right? Because <clears throat> if you're gonna how often do like decent players spend in the two to seven range? Like an hour at best. You know, you probably get a plus three every key and move on and be out of there really quickly. So probably, yeah, you pull of you're full of like noobs and even fresh alts. Again, I always played with guildies or stream, so... I, I mean, TDPs I put, but I tried to do 15s because that's what people were interested in. Uh, throughout my tenure in the trench, though, <clears throat> I have seen horrors beyond mortal comprehension. DPS meters that make me look like a mythic world first raider. Chat logs so cursed it would turn the Zoth himself insane. Today, I bring you one of those stories. A story of one such calamity. It was on this fateful day, my friends and listeners, I was completing some quests that were filling up my quest log, possibly left over from BFA trying to get Lawmaster. Jesus Christ, <laughs> it gets worse. Lawmaster of BFA. <laughs> I don't even think I have that, and I Lawmaster most of the games. I don't think I did Lawmaster of BFA. That's fucking horrendous. Oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I can't quite remember exactly what I was doing, but I think it was Lawmaster. At one point in this particular quest chain, Brother Pike tasks us with venturing into the legendary Shrine of the Storms, recovering a lost ritual, killing the final boss, and returning said ritual to him. Foolish child that I was, I decided to kill two birds with one stone and get me some sweet mythic plus loot while I smash out this quest. Perusing the group finder for Shrine Pugs, there's a few plus tens that I am immediately and without exception denied entry to. <laughs> they didn't even leave you on ignore, they just turned you down. No. <laughs> but outside of the plus tens, there was one singular plus two that accepts me on my main Frost DK. It might be just a plus two, I think to myself, which even by my standards was low. But it's better than nothing, and there's still potential upgrades I can get from there. Time would soon tell what a grim mistake this would turn out to be. <clears throat> All five of us lowered into the dungeon. We start killing some mobs, making some prog. We wipe on the first major trash pull on the stairs. Classic. <laughs> classic. <laughs> Absolute classic and shrine. Uh... <clears throat> No big deal. Nobody complains. None of us are that geared. It's to be expected, etc, etc, etc. We push on. We wipe again on the next big trash pack just after the stairs. Classic. <laughs> again, Shrine is not a fun place to be and Shrine was never a fun key. Again, it's pretty much par for the course and as a seasoned pugger by this point, it actually feels like a pretty smooth <laughs> run. <laughs> <laughs> Three trash packs, two wipes. Things are going pretty well. <laughs> things, are, things are all right. That's so bad. Oh, Jesus, fuck. <sighs> so I'm not too worried about our group. By the time we reach the first boss, we've only wiped five times. Jeez. But we one shot the boss. I realized our group must have been filled with fellow trench veterans like myself. No one had left yet, but the real terror awaited us just round the corner. If you cast your mind back to the Shrine of the Storms, you might remember the first boss, Akusia, isn't exactly tank-centric. At least compared to some others. Uh, God, I've got to get my mind back. Uh, so, bosses in Shrine of the Storms. The first boss is the big water elemental thing. Then it was the guys, it was the two bosses, right? You had two bosses that you had to do something with. And then I think there's only three bosses. It's the big guy. No, no, there's a mind control bosses, boss three. And then the last boss is in the big purple cavern thing that they used for uh, the UNAT raid. Yeah? <clears throat> I think that's correct. Got it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that's correct. <clears throat> so... 
The symptoms of the problem were yet to reveal themselves. But that changed when we got to the second boss, the Tide Sage Council. What did you have to do here? The tank off tank something. You had to move into... It was like a haste buff or something. You had to move into something. I can't remember. For those of you who don't remember or didn't venture into the Shrine of the Storms, if you didn't play World of Warcraft, the Tide Sage Council has two very simple but very important mechanics. When Brother Ironhull casts Reinforcing Wind, you have to move him out the... That's right. You move him out the circle or else he takes 75% reduced damage. The same goes for Gale Caller Faye when she uses Swiftness Ward, else she gains 25% haste and will quickly devastate your team with her powerful casts. It was here that I realized what our previous wipes were due to. In my e you weren't taunting into the fucking thing. In my eagerness to smash out the dungeon, I had not inspected any of the party members. When I did so, I found myself looking at our Guardian Druid tank. Full green. As far as the eye could see, he looked like a forest. <laughs> Our difficulty of the trash now made more sense. But as long as we DPS and the healer picked up the little bit of slack, it's only a plus two, remember? It's only a plus two. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. We arrived at the council and the annoying trash outside it and ran straight to the boss. Pulling every si <laughs> We pulled every single trash mob and caused a wipe. Instead of not doing that, we tried this a second time. At which point the tank said this is how he saw it done on Switch. Every time. Every fucking time, man. Every fucking time. This is what this is what's going on in these low level dungeons. Every fucking time. Every time these fucking superheroes who sit there watching the MDI and fucking try and repeat it in a plus two in their green gear druid. <sighs> on the third try, uh, on the third try, we tried again. And then, but this time we pulled the boss as well. On the fourth attempt to reach the second boss, we ins we killed the trash after healer insisted. But we did wipe on the boss because the bear didn't pull either of the bosses out of their circles and got crushed into the floor. I decide to break my social stigma. I have been in the pug world now for quite some time and I actually know what's causing the problem. I might be terrible at the game, but I can see exactly what the issue is and i decide to pluck up all my courage and type a message in the group chat <clears throat> druid you have to move the bosses out of the circles i hit that enter key with all the sturdiness of a chad who had just found his perfect lady i knew i was correct i knew it with my heart and my soul and it felt good to be spreading some knowledge that I'd acquired in this game. He didn't respond. Not a single word. He also didn't stop doing what he was doing and we wiped two more times. But, upon remembering that I have death grip... You were pulling... The oh my god. <laughs> And reminding our team to use their interrupts on the caster, we eventually scraped through the encounter and killed it. Round of applause. Not only did our boy start typing in chat, but he actually fucking fixed the mechanic for the tank. GG's. Good job, bro. Good job. Moving up in the world. Becoming a bit of a fucking gamer. Not bad. And so on we moved to the third boss. <clears throat> At this stage, we have spent close to 40 minutes in this dungeon and have 38 deaths. <laughs> Two bosses down, 40 minutes, 38 deaths, Shrine of the Storm. Poggers. <laughs> what an afternoon. What a solid afternoon. What? <laughs> but how? <laughs> but how? I know some of you, uh, and my patience is wearing out. Why didn't you just leave? I know some of you are saying. The answer, my dear preacher, is I had a quest to do. And we were getting closer. Yeah, about that quest, though. 
<laughs> at least you're about to learn something. I mean, some education is coming, which is good. That's all. I mean, you won't make this mistake again. <laughs> you won't make it again. <clears throat> and I simply could not be fucked trying to get into another pug as that had taken me almost an hour already. You have given two hours of your life a costly amount of gold to a plus two shrine of the storm by this point. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how different the world would be if you just typed a quick thing into Google? Can you imagine how different your life would be? Well, we wouldn't be here reliving this story with you, though, so I guess... Uh, <laughs> I guess. Hey, it could be worse. You could spend four hours trying to figure out how to summon a boss. Not that I did that last week. <clears throat> anyway. The third boss, Shrine of the Storm, Lord Stormsong. Was bad enough in my regular trench pugs, but with people that didn't know to damage the controlled guy and run into the orbs when you're controlled. But this was something else entirely. This was something bizarre. This was something you'd expect from the Marvel Universe. It was... It was beautiful in its own way. Try as I might, I simply could not communicate to this group what they were supposed to do. In a way that they could understand what they were supposed to do. Exasperated, frustrated, but fully, fully in deep with the sunk cost fallacy. I was determined to keep going. Eventually, somehow, with the clock reading well over an hour and change and up to 54 deaths and minus one of our DPS who had left, we pulled through and found ourselves at the final boss. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to this day, I do not know what kept the rest of my fellow group members in that dungeon with us that day. I can only assume that they, too, were invested so much. Or perhaps it was their first Mythic Plus. And they just wanted to get it in the bank. Nevertheless, we stood face to face with Volzith the Whisperer. And ladies and gentlemen, we would come face to face with Volzith many more times over the next 30 minutes. Over and over and over we wiped. Our tank, bless his cotton socks, didn't really understand the concept of putting the big silencing circles somewhere that weren't going to fuck everybody over. So we had to maneuver between them like saving Private Ryan, while also dodging tentacles that slammed down on you. Without our third DPS, it was even more difficult to overcome our tank shortcomings. And at one point, I even attempted to swap to blood spec, only to find out that Blizzard, Daddy Blizzard, wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> With all these wipes, I'm pretty sure you could pop outside for a second. You'll be okay. <laughs> we were hard stuck, my friends. And there was also the problem of the three ads that all had to be interrupted. Else they would restore health. Our group struggled and struggled. And we wiped several more times before we managed to perfectly time our kick buttons. By this, I mean we managed to target different ads when we pressed said button. The encounter that followed was so nail-biting and epic. It calls back my memories of beating High Lord Cruel and the Blood DK Mage Tower mere hours after the pre-patch arrived and it was removed from the game. Hey, well played. We stood above the corpse of Volzith. We did it. We killed that boss. The clock was just under two hours, ladies and gentlemen. 84 deaths in total, but we had done it. All that was left was to claim my sweet loot from the end of the dungeon chest. But you, my dear preacher, already know just as well as I do that I got jack shit. Fuck and all. Finally, the dungeon defeated and my party remembers having immediately left. I was just about to pour out when I remembered that I hadn't looted the boss for the quest. So I make my way back. Past the third boss, across the bridge to the room where the corpse lay. But for some reason it wasn't there. My first instinct is to Google the quest on Wowhead. Ah, 
I know some members of the Wowhead team watch our channel. <clears throat> Can you put a big fucking message on every dungeon-related quest that just says this cannot be done in Mythic Plus? Just on every page. Anything that is something to do with a quest involving a dungeon, this cannot be done in Mythic Plus. Right at the top. Just right at the top. I look up on Wowhead and all the comments say it should be there. I follow the instructions that people have left. I use my quest item. It still doesn't appear. I'm at my wits end trying to figure out how the fuck I've bugged the encounter. Two hours I've been here putting myself through what can only be described as psychological torture and I'm not giving up. There should be a shiny white scroll right there. I click people's links to see the screenshot. It appears in my inventory and I go on my merry way. That's exactly what the wowhead comments tell me. And then the crushing realization comes down upon me, that which of course many all of you already know. A footnote on a wiki page about Mythic Plus. Blizzard and their mysterious and bastard ways have made it so quest items, etc. do not work in Mythic Plus. I sat back in my chair. Hoping that there would be no mirror near me to look at what I had become. I had just spent two hours in absolute living hell. It was the entirety of my gaming time that I had set apart for that evening. For nothing. Nothing. Except for a little bit of education. I do hereby solemnly swear to never, ever again spend two hours in a plus two dungeon. In the end, I'm pretty sure I just abandoned the quest in complete resignation. You could have just spec tank and got into heroic, though. Like, in like 10 seconds. <laughs> That'd be done. You could have just spec blood, got into a fucking heroic, and just smashed it out in like 5 fucking minutes. Fuck that quest. Fuck Shrine of the Storms. Fuck whatever the reason why I was doing it. It was never, ever worth it. I'm sorry, Preach. There were so many things I could have done differently. But this is the terrible tale of the experience I endured. I do hope you enjoyed it, though. So long and farewell. Enjoy is a word, for sure. Enjoy is absolutely a word. Um, it made me very sad in many ways and i think it, uh, we can take a message from this listeners and audience when you guys can't believe like you are dumbstruck why certain people can't do things you find so easy so simple and then i tell you i tell you my friends that you just don't understand what's going on out there Burial all? Uh, burial all. Oh, I see. <sighs> While I do appreciate the support of all our audience, supporting us just so you can get your hilarious name into drama time, I mean, I'll accept it. Sure. <laughs> it's a combination of rat and anime. Uh, I'm a anime. Anime. I definitely need some food and rest. <sighs> lean okay uh he went full noob he went full noob there we go he went full noob we have a lot of people in here tifu lyhart naru mallory burial all ratchan and Celine. And Amine, Amine, <laughs> I can say the words, it's fine, it's fine. Let's go. Bex, hello to you, Preacher, and your live chat, hello to you. I have been watching Drama Times whilst recovering from a mental health incident. Jesus, fuck, man. Don't do that. It can't help. It can't help, right? Uh, it can't help. I, I don't spiral. That's uh, please. We want you to look after yourselves. It loves and hearts. I'm not sure. I mean, hopefully, drama time provides you with a smile. And I remembered my own tale. How I became a raid leader.
before I'd capped in World of Warcraft. <sighs> this is my story. <sighs> Tragically, I was never allowed to play video games when I was growing up. My parents refused to have consoles in their house as it was against Jesus. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh because it sounds fucking miserable, but... <laughs> what has Jesus got against Cuba or Mario? I think Jesus would be down with Mario, right? Have some spaghetti, some toads, some mushrooms, like... The Bible does the Bible talk specifically about which consoles you're allowed and not allowed? I haven't read the Bible to be honest with you. I haven't. I've read some parts. It was very long. Uh, <coughs> which ones are mentioned in there? Is Nintendo okay? Is, I mean, Sony. I understand that's got like Resident Evil on it, but Nintendo, come on. And I was an only child. My early exposure to games. <clears throat> <laughs> hey, consoles aren't allowed in for Jesus, but Dad's got a PC for work. <laughs> yeah, he plays games on it. Oh, you motherfucker. Dad's like, Jesus can stay the fuck off my PC. <laughs> Jesus hates con consoles, but Jesus loves a PC. Yeah, yeah. My early exposure to games was seeing my dad sneakily playing Warcraft 2 against his friend on our dial-up internet circa 1998 on a Sunday of all days. And my mum yelling at him that Jesus didn't appreciate him playing games on a Sunday. Ah. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> fuck yeah dad's like will you fuck off i'm playing games uh, <laughs> she wanted him to hurry up and win already uh <clears throat> both uh, both men playing were military officers and they took their warcraft 2 battles very very seriously which is why he was allowed to play it was battle strategy my fucking guy is fucking dodging like neo <laughs> <laughs> Well, what if the enemy gets an Arthur's? Right? Or some fucking Treants? Or some elves turn up on the battlefield? What Jesus gonna do then? Tell me about it. Now I know. I was 10 years old at the time, and I thought what I saw on the screen was epic. Anyway, let's go to 2010. I'd finished my master's degree and was awaiting surgery on my legs. Like Forrest Gump? What were you doing? Do you tell us? surgery on your legs i heard there was another warcraft game and wanted something to fill my time whilst i recovered oh no details curious i hope you like i hope you're walking stuff all right so i got the old world of warcraft trial i seem to remember it was 10 days up to level 20 and limited social functions my parents had eased up at that point but their internet was well broadband two mega second broadband this has to be America. Broadband in the UK minimum was 40 or 20. Something like that. Two megasecond broadband. Ugh. So it took a while. I flicked through the classes and made a female gnome mage. You can appreciate that. That's all right. She had, had, she had pink pigtails and was absolutely gorgeous. Mwah! I can appreciate a good pink pigtailed female gnome mage. Classic. I loved that gnome. I bought the battle chest. I didn't know about the expansions, but I didn't want to spend more money until I got there. Smart. I was, of course, a clicker. Classic. I also didn't really understand much about what was going on. I knew the arrow keys made my character move. I knew when I clicked on my spells that they cast. And I knew that I had some cool things like portals as a mage as I had read about them. I was really confused though. I had all of this gear in my bags, all mixes of plate, axes, all kinds of stuff. And my gnome kept saying, I can't use that yet. I googled, when can I use plate? <laughs> and the top answer said level 40. <laughs> uh, classic. 
<laughs> so I held onto my plate as it had significantly more armor than what I had. Ugh. I tell you now, Preacher, my bank was filled to the brim with plate, axes, all kinds of stuff waiting for that sweet day of level 40. Well, that day came. And it still wasn't usable. It really, really bothered me. I also kept seeing flowers and sparkly rocks out in the world. I assumed that this was something for people who had the most recent expansion. So I just shrewed and moved on with my merry way. <laughs> wow. Fancy. <laughs> they get copper ore. Peace bloom. Rich. Must be nice, eh? At the top. Must be, ni must be nice. I did, however, Google what mages used and learned that I should sell everything that wasn't cloth or staves, wands or offhands. So I did that and made a pretty penny with my vast collection. I leveled pretty slowly, as you can imagine. But also, I was applying for PhDs, writing my proposal and emailing potential supervisors. I was also in a fair amount of pain and dealing with rehab for my first leg surgery. What did you have? So it took me about six months to make it to the end of the Burning Crusade leveling. I had gone fire. You leveled as fire? What era was this? Mainly because I thought living bomb sounded like the most badass ability when I browsed through the talent trees. <clears throat> it was then when I decided I was ready to try out a dungeon. You got to the end of the Burning Crusade without doing a single dungeon? I hadn't realized dungeons were a thing until one day I was mousing over different icons and saw the dungeon finder. I thought that that sounded like scary stuff since it involved other people. So I just quested to level 70. That fucking sucks. That really sucks. Up until then, every quest I had had that mentioned dungeon in it was red. So I'd abandoned them as they were probably for group players or guilds. I can kind of see the logic. But you're also studying for a PhD? Not oh, damn. In that dungeon, I had no idea what was happening or what I was doing. And at the end of the dungeon, another mage whispers me, it immediately caused my anxiety to spike. Somebody was talking about me individually in the pink. What do I do and how do I deal with this with the thoughts that ran through my head? The whisper was this and I remember it as clear as day. Yo, dude. Why are you just hard casting pyro over and over? <laughs> Is that what you do in the Dutch? Running up... <laughs> Mob's dead. Next one. <laughs> Mob's dead. Fuck. I almost got it off. Almost. Almost casted a spell. I'll get it on the boss. It, it, <clears throat> I didn't actually understand what he was asking me. He then types, Bro, you only cast Pyro when you have a proc. It then dawned on me that sometimes my pyro button went sparkly. And when it did, pyro went off instantly. Oh, I said. Am I not supposed to hardcast it? I remember squeaking and giggling IRL, reeling how dumb I probably was for not realizing the system. Thanks, dude, I typed back. Sure. Noob. Was the reply I got. Why? You gave some nice advice to someone who clearly didn't know what they were doing, right? You gave a nice piece of advice to someone who didn't know what they were doing. And then at the end, you called them a noob. Fucking noob. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I didn't do another dungeon again. Oh, you piece of shit. Not you, the author. The fucking guy. What a piece of shit. 
Calling it like I see it. <laughs> I'm calling it like I see it. Hey, I'm calling a spade a spade. Yeah, I'm just a truth teller. That's what I am. I'm just telling. I'm just telling it like it is. My mage still exists to this day. Still at level 70 and probably still in Shatrath. I loved that character. But I died a lot and I felt so weak and soft. I did some googling and learned that mages were known as glass cannons. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Tried PvPing one of them motherfuckers. I didn't want to be a glass cannon. I have slow reactions anyway. Maybe a different class will give me the best environment to try World of Warcraft. Another five months passed. I had an offer to do my PhD. My second lead surgery had been a success. And I had a month to relax before I started the next step of my academic career. So I bought myself one month of WoW. And this time, I did fucking research. I googled, and I kid you not... What do girls play in World of Warcraft? I mean, why would you Google that? What is that even supposed to mean? What is, what is that even supposed to mean? Like, there's gendered classes? The answer is priest, but... Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the answer is priest. I'm sure that's what came back. I don't remember what the sources were. I probably read it now I think about it. But I learned that girls tend to play healers or ranged. <laughs> I wanted to play on the horde this time. So my beloved mage had been alliance. And I was bench benching that character for a while. I also learned that girls tended to play blood elves. Okay, I'm googling this. What do girls play in World of Warcraft? The survey was 50, uh, uh, who are you playing? That's, that's, uh, who's playing? People also ask how to get your girlfriend to play WoW. Try saying something like, I would have more fun playing World of Warcraft if you join me, and I think it would be a great way for us to spend more time together. People also ask, uh... There's no real answer. Oh, Cora's got an answer. A lot of really fucking weird questions going on here. <laughs> this is possibly the most cringe. I googled some weird shit on Drama Time and in general while streaming. This is the most cringe shit I've ever read in my life. This is really cringe. This is some real fucking nerd vibes going on here. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm going away from there. That's, I'm not reading it. That's the story unto itself. You can all feel free to Google the same question. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it gets a little, uh, a little weird what people appear to be Googling. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what do girls play? Um, where were we? I want to play all this time. Uh, I learned that girls tended to play Blood Elves. I accepted the new, the new player server that the game recommended to me. <laughs> this is why... Why, Blizzard? Medium at the minimum, right? <sighs> that server is dead now. What a shock. But at the time I joined, it had some good guilds on Horde side. But yeah, it was not great. And now I know. <laughs> now you know. So I clicked through the other race on the Horde side. Trolls look stupid. I like the pink braids on the troll, but the big feet freaked me out. Tora and I couldn't envisage, and Orcs were a straight no. I oscillate between a gobbo or a forsaken. Forsaken every day of the week. Fucking forsaken male caster, right? If you're going to go healer. Mm. I knew I wanted to be melee, and I read the descriptions carefully. Gobbo? Melee gobbo? Ew. I was disappointed I couldn't make a death knight goblin since they look really cool and most like my little gnome that left me at the time a druid. Okay. Uh, didn't work, uh, uh, left me at a time a druid. Didn't work on the races I wanted and seemed intimidating since I could do so much. A rogue, which sounded like it was too strategic, or a warrior. I don't remember why I didn't consider shaman, but I know, I know I decided that tanks sounded awesome. And that meant I would probably die less. Gonna be great. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna, it's gonna be totally fine. So, <laughs> I made my female undead warrior. Ugh. I clicked and keyboard turned my way through the starter zone. 
At level 15, I saw that dungeons had opened up, and without shaking hand, I with a shaking hand, I selected tank and queued. Okay. Now, it could have gone worse. It could have gone worse. I had read my skill tooltips, and I got taunts and the basics, but I was really, really slow. Halfway through, I realized my anxiety could not cope with being a tank. When the dungeon was over, I vowed that as soon as I could dual spec open, I would use arms. But until then, I was leveling through quests. I, <laughs> until <laughs> As pro... Okay. Before I had to go off to the university for my PhD, I had reached level 50. And they took a break again. My next time in WoW came in February 2012. What era are we in here? 2012. So this is MOP, right? So this was pre-MOP. I had broken my right wrist in three places. Legs, wrist, fucking hell, what's going on? After slipping on the ice. Oh, are you Canadian? Sounds Canadian. Although I was left-handed and could still do my PhD work, I was unable to use the gym or play sports. Feeling lonely and isolated, I decided to resubscribe to WoW. Ah, uh, it could be Brittle Bones. Yeah, maybe. I found my level 50 warrior and continued her journey. I was level 69 and in Shatrath, trying to figure out how to get where I needed to go, when a guild invite suddenly appeared on my screen. Oh, uh, we need a guild name. What's the guild name for this story? Go quick. Quick, 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 quick. Live audience. Uh, great, great, great. I must have missed it at the beginning of the story as to what we got. We're going with... Wormbait. Perfect. Wormbait was a huge guild. Their raid team had full cleared normal firelands and Dragon Soul and had some heroic kills in the Dragon Soul. I didn't know what any of this meant, but I assumed it meant they were really, really good. <laughs> I knew instinctively that raiding wasn't for me. I couldn't even handle a dungeon. I bought myself Wrath of the Lich King as a gift and continued to level. In April, I got my cast off and returned to my usual pursuits. I've got hiccups. I also had a lot of deadlines. So once more, I put WoW on hold. I admire your tenacity that you can just play WoW for like a month. You pay for a month and then the month runs out and you go back to normal life. You're very disciplined. I appreciate that. I would pick it up again in 2013. I was midway through my second year of my thesis and was very stressed due to struggling with my proposal defense at the end of my first year. I had one more chance. As a way to blow off some steam, I bought myself another month. I got Kata and the latest expansion, Miss of Pandaria, and leveled pretty quickly. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. My memory of early Miss Endgame is characterized by me hating the Klaxi. I hated the clicky noises in the Dark Zone. But my torture came from the Shadow Pan dailies. Wormbait was a guild run by a husband and wife. Tifu was, uh, Tifu was a warlock, and Lionheart, his wife, was a rep pally. They were both part of the 10-man raid team. Tifu choosing to raid on his hunter. I really struggled with the Shadow Pan dailies, and it got to the point where Tifu or Lion would see I was online, see I was in the daily quest area, would group with me, and help me complete the daily quests. Yes, I'm genuinely serious. I wasn't good enough to do daily quests by myself. Okay. I continued my merry way, playing for a couple of hours, one or two evenings a week. I liked running dungeons on my warrior, and especially with a couple of friends, and eventually I decided to try the LFR. At the time, Throne of Thunder had just opened. Good start. I was running the first raid of Mop in LFR. <clears throat> I had spoken with Tifu, who had mentioned that raiders used add-ons, which weren't cheating in World of Warcraft. <laughs> Mainly DBM and Recamp. He explained to me how to install these, and I did. And at the end of the LFR, I was at the bottom of the DPS meter in every fight. Information that I had not known until I had installed add-ons. Oof. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, the blissful ignorance has been pulled away. The curtain has been pulled back. Oh, no. Oh, disaster. <laughs> I nearly cried IRL. Oh, no. I'll be honest with you guys, I struggle with self-esteem and I've always been shy. Oh, God. I wish you'd asked me. 
When Tifu, I know, social anxiety and stuff. Probably never heard of me at this point. When Tifu asked me how it went, I told him. He laughed and said, don't worry about it. You'll get better. It just takes practice. Good dude, Tifu. High five. He directed me to Wowhead and Icy Veins. To learn about both the raids. <laughs> and also, worry. I'm only shaking my head. Come see me. Now, sometime after the first tier of raids and now, and not when I was online, the guild stopped raiding. I never really knew, had really known who was on the raid team besides the GM and his wife. The Naru, who was the senior officer and along with Tifu and Lion, one of the leaders of the guild, arranged for a fun welcoming raid through the Mists tier. All are free to sign up. This sounded perfect. I get to play with people who understand my position and know I have little raid experience. This sounds pretty good. I signed up on my warrior because, hey... Why not? I have nothing else planned, and it's a good opportunity. I had a big deadline that week, and I needed to let off some steam. I learned that to join, I needed something called TeamSpeak. And Tifu helped me to install it. I had a good headset, my weakness is music, and since I lived in a studio apartment in a student village, since it was subsidized for PhD students with disabilities, you could bet I wanted bang-on headphones with noise cancelling. So I connected. Now, once again, my shyness won out, and I just said, Hi. Immediately, though, in all caps in the guild chat. Oh my god, mate! Who is the girl, though? There's a girl in the room! I died a little inside. This is exactly what I didn't want. I wanted to be invisible. Lionheart, who was also in the call, and also a woman, said it was her. No, it won't, mate! No, it won't, mate! That voice was sexy. Your voice isn't. Charmer. What an absolute charmer. No, mate. No, mate. You sound like you have fucking rubbed your tongues in rocks. I ain't you. I know what you sound like. <laughs> I whispered Naru and said, maybe it would be better if I don't join. Oh. He instantly responded saying, it's fine. Don't be silly. The group was formed and it was agreed we were 10 man. We only had one tank, a DK called Talin. Of the 11, pe 11 other people, one wouldn't join TS and the other was a warrior like me. I was honestly fine with not raiding. I didn't think it would really be for me anyway and my anxiety was now at peak level after the girl comment. But then Naru said we needed a second tank. The other warrior immediately responded, I am Arms Fury. Don't even own a shield. Fucking. You know what I mean, mate? I, I bring the fucking apocalypse when I play. I ain't playing no fucking fucking tank like a bitch. Not doing it. You know what I mean? I ain't no pussy. I do damage. I said I do have proc gear, but I'm new to tanking. They said it was fine. And in I went as a tank. I loved it. But I was well shit. Talin was geared from Throne of Thunder and a Death Knight. He knew what he was doing, and to be honest, I don't think a single mob hit me. <laughs> the whole night, I just pressed taunt when he said taunt. And we killed bosses. Legend. Fucking Chad DK steps up. He's like, I got this. Don't worry about it. Death and decay. Disease is out. All the trash is mine. Press taunt. Good. My debuffs reset. I'll take it back. Easy game. Easy life. <clears throat> but I noticed something. People were complaining about me in the chat. Oh no. People I didn't know in the guild. I didn't know the Naru well enough to ask him. Tifu wasn't in the group and Lion was AFK straight after. But then a hunter named Mallory messaged me. Just ignore them. You did great for a first raid. I looked at their character, a blood elf female hunter, and sent a smile back and said, I was pretty bad. I continued to do the occasional LFR and dungeon on my warrior, but I was feeling disheartened. I didn't have the confidence to tank for strangers. That was insane. And I wasn't improving as a DPSer. I was still a clicker, and although I kind of knew my rotation at this point, I didn't really understand gems, enchants, reforging, and all the different systems that were in the game. Don't worry. It's going to get way simpler real soon. 
everything's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be so easy. Uh, next few years especially going to be a breeze. I also hadn't made much progress on my Lego cloak since I didn't understand the quest line was an important part of it. <laughs> the Naru still ran the occasional older raid night and I tried to join, but always is DPS now. I looked at his character, a male blood elf warlock, and specifically his purple observer. It looked so cool. He was always at the top of the damage meters. Now, I don't think I could be that good, but warlock looked really easy. And it did good damage. That'd be fine. That'd be so... I mean, if we were to put them on a scale, warlock is classically one of the easiest classes in the game. You're going to be totally fine. So I talked to him and also to Tifu, and both agreed that Warlock is really, really fun and worth a try. So I made a predictable female Blood Elf Warlock and began my new journey. I was aided by the fact that I aced my annual assessment for my PhD and rewarded myself with a full week off of relaxation time. During that time, I devoted myself uh, to getting my little Warlock up to level 90. Now, I know what you might be thinking, but I had a way easier time as a Warlock. I didn't need to call on others. Ah, yes. Voidwalker putting in fucking work, boys. I didn't need to call on others to help me as often, and in general, I was much happier. As time passed, I began to read more about the game. I learned about gemming. I learned about enchanting. I learned about asking Mr. Robot for about reforging. Oh my god, Mr. Robot for reforging. Wow. Do you remember that? Shit, dude. I totally remember that. I'd forgotten about that up until you brought it up. God bless the reforge light add-on. May it rest in peace. So good. I started to enjoy using Wowhead more and more. I was still a clicker. I was now aware of keybinding, but I am afflicted with tiny hands. <laughs> what I, I shouldn't laugh, but that makes me think you've got, like, scary tiny hands. <laughs> really small, tiny little hands. Like a mouse button's, like, two-hand press on the left and the right, you know? <laughs> But I do also have uh, uh, blown tendons in my fingers, so they're not as mobile, which means I don't have the level of control I should. I also suffer from dyslexia and dyspraxia. Wow, and you still aced your PhD? Well played you. And whilst keybinding might be possible with enough experimentation, at the time, it wasn't really an option. I learned about the new raid that opened, uh, Siege of Orgrimmar. It sounded so, so fun. I learned that flex mode was a good setup from LFR, and I talked I talked to Naru and asked if we could do the new raid. Now, <clears throat> this guild had not raided current content since the start of Mr. Pandaria. The only players left from the raid team were Naru, Lion, and Tifu. Tifu no longer wanted to even bother raiding; he wanted to chill. Lion didn't like leading, so I talked to Naru. He was willing to help lead, but categorically did not want to be a raid leader. I really, really wanted to try a real raid. I was good on my warlock. I was better. I wanted to do it. So I put up an event on the calendar for Flex Siege of Orgrimmar. I read what was the best spec and respect into destruction and was loving it. Chaos, Chaos Bolt looked so pretty. Naru was giving me help and advice. I asked him what I needed to do and prepare and he linked me some videos which I watched and took notes on. I still had the notes I had made for prepping all the raids in a binder in real life. You made a, you printed them out? <clears throat> I have now burnt them a few months ago in a cathartic moment. <laughs> you burnt all your binders on WoW raids? Interesting. In my early days, I had to look up and note down what spells I could use for stuns and interrupts. On the night, 16 people showed up. And we made our way through the first four bosses. I'll be honest, I saw the bosses and instantly forgot everything. I was so shy and could barely talk. Thankfully, Naru did take over, and we all decided that this was really easy. So after a lot of talking, it was agreed that we would try to set up an official normal raid team for 10-man. Our roster would be... Two Blood Death Knights, a DPS Death Knight, a Rep Pally... Good luck getting plate, fellas... One hunter, one mage, two warlocks, a resto druid, and a resto shaman. Naru, Mallory, my M Naru, Mallory, my hunter friend, and another guy who was experienced raider who now played casually, all gave me help and advice on what raid leaders should do. A good job for you. 
We start. Nara and I worked well together. I was able to start overcoming my shyness. Enough to call out what I wanted people to do. Stack, spread, focus the ad. The order of people going through the portals, etc. Naru dealt with everything else to do with raids, like people not having flasks, loot distribution. He would help, uh, help me with gear and talents. We made progress. It was amazing. I was still keyboard turning, and I definitely struggled to do damage while moving, but I rarely died. And whilst I understood what needed to be done and what I needed others to do, execution was definitely difficult for me. We were doing this April May time in 2014, so we were by no means brilliant, and we only raided two hours a night, two nights a week, which included a five minute break. This apparently after discussion was vital because we had smokers and those who needed to refill their drinks. <laughs> you can't last two hours. We had a small mini drama when Mallory, our hunter, refused to raid anymore with Lion. This was because Lion and Tifu made a teenager called Ratchan, who was also a hunter and officer, over Mallory's strong objections. Ratchan was weird. He was the one who was obsessed with my voice. He was also convinced that he was our best player, despite uh, often failing. I didn't select Ratchan to take Mallory's place, instead selecting another girl who was also a hunter. Our wall was Thok the Bloodthirsty. We got stuck for a really long time. I'm not sure what the problem was in recollection, but we seemed to die all the fucking time in the second phase. Now, I learned about markers, and Naru showed me how to place them. I thought this was amazing. One of our DKs couldn't come one week, and I was casting around for a replacement. Our DPS Death Knight could also tank, but then I needed a DPS. Our salvation. Our hero. Our angel from the sun himself came in the form of Berlialol. A paladin on our server who had cleared heroic Siege of Ogrimmar and was friends with some people in our guild. I will lend you my axe. He agreed. We killed Thok on the first pull. We killed Siegecrafter. With Burial Lol explaining to me why certain classes were good at things. We just cut through content like butter. I was riding a high. Burial Lol was amazing. He taught me about weak horrors and explained how I could improve. He got me to install weak horrors and then sent me weak horrors to install. I learned how they worked and my DPS shot up. My confidence rising. And I was battling with Naru for the top DPS spot even while raid leaning. Although it was noticeable I dropped off when I needed to do more, uh, more hand-holding on, say, Paragons of the Klaxi, he spent a long time with me at Target Dummies. You shall be my Padawan. We killed Paragons and my little, fun, ten-man group stood before Garrosh Hellscream himself. We progressed slowly through the fight. And one August night, I was at my parents' house. They agreed to let me game on my dad's PC. Naru was having internet issues and couldn't join. Selene was also out due to vacation. Selene wasn't an issue since we were one tanking Garrosh with our other DK. Something that had been working really well for our team. I didn't want to bring in Burial All on his main. His Shaman was about our item level, so he decided to come on that. And Mallory joined on his, on his Hunter. I was happy with Ray leading Phase 1 and 2 in the intermission, but Phase 3 we were still working on. Burial All gave advice, and towards the end of the night, we were getting to 10% consistently. We had been 30 minutes late starting due to Naru's internet issues and shuffling the roster, so I asked if everyone could please accept the ready check if you can extend by another pull. Yes. Yes, we can. On the final pull of the night, 10.30 UK time, Garrosh Hellscream, normal died i was so so happy we took screenshots on our mounts i loved that raid team with all my heart the next week we killed it again for naru and talin it took a few pulls on garish to relearn without burial all holding my hand but we did it 
the rush of realizing we had figured out the fight we had been working on and killing it is what kept me raiding. We were late, and I didn't have a clue how many people did it. I wasn't even trying to compare myself to anyone other than the people in my team that had learnt this fight next to me, and it felt awesome. This is how I, a noob, who had failed in a dungeon, who had never done a dungeon until near cap, became a raid leader. And it was amazing. I raided with Naru and Mallory for that first raid team until after we got ahead of the curve in Eternal Palace. Although from Hellfire Citadel, I was maining a Guardian Druid, which I remained until EP I, after going back to Warlock. I completed my PhD during Legion after a few setbacks, submitted my thesis during a clear of Antorus, checking the upload between pulls on Argus. I transferred to the Alliance following an incident and joined a guild, joined a new guild with my now known Warlock with pink pigtails. And I went on to get five out of eight, five out of eight Mythic in Eternal Palace and Cutting Edge in Nihilotha. When I changed, I spent time learning to keybind. And I learnt it. And I immediately found that it was way better than clicking. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, this is way better. <laughs> There's, let's just put it this way, right? To the people who still to this fucking day, I swear to you guys, people still to this fucking day, argue with me about this. There ain't nobody who goes back to keybind to clicking after keybinding. Everybody goes from clicking to keybinding. Nobody goes the other way unless a hand issue occurs or something like that, right? That should say enough. People, it's a one-way street, motherfucker. The one-way street. I got cutting edge denial Otha, capped off my WoW experience, and I knew I was done. I did come back by request to help my guild kill, kill Denathrius after they'd been through some drama, but I didn't really play Shadowlands. Not because of how it was, but because of IRL. But I still remembered my original team, my first raid, and I didn't even know that you could turn without using the arrow keys. Those memories are what playing these games is all about and why I still love it to this day. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great day. A nice story to finish us out, my friends, after the misery of the first one. A lovely story. That was wonderful. I hope your medical issues are in some way resolved. I imagine they're ongoing, but I, it's it's great that you got to game and got going somewhere. That's really, really nice. And congratulations, of course, on your PhD. That's fantastic. Really happy for you. Ladies and gents, that's drama time for today. It's obviously Thursday. It's not the end of the stream by any means. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, we purify the world in the morning and Lords of the Fallen in the afternoon. So be good. And uh, remember, FanFest is just around the corner. I will see many of you very, very soon. Uh, look out for me. I'll be the one wearing a giant yellow top hat. Hard to miss. All right. So be good. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. <laughs>